Welcome to Crazy Shit in Real Estate, a weekly podcast where I walk you through some of the wildest, most unbelievable stories you'll hear from the world of real estate. If you like real estate and you love crazy, this is the podcast for you. And welcome back to the podcast. I'm Lee Brown, and you're listening to Crazy Shit in Real Estate, where we do our level best to help you see the things that happen in real estate that will never, ever in the history of the world appear on HGTV, because frankly, I don't think they have the stomach for real real estate like realtors do. And today I'm very pleased to bring y'all a guest who you're going to super enjoy. And her name is Leanne Long. Leanne, thank you for coming on the show. Well, thanks for inviting me. I look forward to it, Lee. I am Leanne Long with Remax Around Atlanta out of Conyers, Georgia, which is about 30 miles outside of Atlanta. And we are a kind of a boutique uh, real estate company right here in downtown Conyers, a little town. And uh, we do a about four counties in the area and just love being in our little town and have a great time. So now how long have you been doing full time real estate? I have been doing it about 22 years, and I'm the broker owner and full-time selling broker, so I look forward to it. Oh, your silver anniversary is coming up in three years. you got to start thinking about some really cool ideas. Yes, like I said, I am. Uh, I love it. I have about nine agents. We just have a great time. So my favorite thing you just said is you have about nine agents. Does that mean you're fixing to add one today, or is one fixing to go? <laughs> <laughs> let, let, let go. You never know how that day goes. So, so. No, no, we are. Uh, we're always looking for great talent. And then, you know, sometimes when people, you know, sometimes they want to move on. So, you know, that's OK, too. So, but no, we, we are. Uh, the market's really hot here. So it, everything is um, we're finally the economy is uh, strong in our area. Again, Georgia was hit really hard with foreclosures and it's taken a while to come back. And uh, but now we list a house and about two days later. It's um, under contract. So people are jumping back in the market and we're loving that. And our office is growing again. Well, I think what you meant was if it's appropriately priced for the condition it's in, it sells in two days, right? <laughs> well, you know what? And we, we spend a lot of time with our listings. I, I specialize in listings more than I do anything else. And we spend a lot of time getting our homes ready where they can go under contract quickly and pricing them correctly and, and having our homeowners get the houses ready so they can get the, the most money for their homes and have them sell quickly for the most amount of money. Okay, so the two ground rules for the podcast, I'm pretty sure you're aware of them, but I'll remind you and all of our lovely listeners, too. I don't mind salty language because I'm that girl, too, but I draw the line at the F word GD and see you next Tuesday because they're just too ugly for me when I have my face on and I have my face on today. And if there are guilty parties in your story, let's don't use their real names. Let's call them somebody X so that they're the only ones that can identify their bad behavior. So with that being said, Leanne, 22 years, I could probably let you talk a long time about the crazy things you've seen. So the hard part for most of my guests is narrowing it down to that story that still makes you shake your head. So I'd love for you to tell our listeners the crazy thing you encountered that you never would have expected. You know, the biggest thing that I really struggle with right now is ethics in real estate. You know, getting these phone calls at 11 o'clock at night, trying to show, I do a lot of luxury properties, trying to show a property with no credentials, no anything. Hey, I'd like to show your property tomorrow. And it comes in on your text message at 11 o'clock at night. And I'm thinking, really? You want to show a property? You don't have any information, nothing. You know, I got one Friday night at 1130. Hey, we'd like to show this property at 8 a.m. on Saturday morning. I'm thinking, really? You got to be kidding me. We're not seeing the property at 8 o'clock in the morning. So that that is my biggest pet peeve right now is ethics and real estate. And, you know, um, I'm old school. I've been doing this a long time. You know, really, really, that's my big thing. I, I think that's I'm on a roll about that recently is spending a lot of time working with people, do, doing buyer interviews, getting things together. So when you're taking people out that you, you you can show professionalism when you're taking somebody around and getting, you know, finding out. Internet has kind of ruined that for me. You know, somebody calls you up and says, hey, I want to see this house. They don't know anybody, anything about the people. You know, you need to know something about your clients. And that's something I sell as a uh, listing agent is I'm going to make sure before someone comes in your home that we know something about that person. How are you conveying this to the people that you work with, particularly buyers? Because I think we understand in real estate, sellers are just more methodical, more systems based. We can control access to the property. They understand getting it ready for showings for the most part. But then on the other side, you have buyers in a society of immediate gratification who want their way right now. They don't want to follow any rules, any processes. 
And frankly, I think part of that does fall on the realtors with whom they're affiliating because that realtor is not explaining to them that if you abide by certain processes, you can actually have more success in winning the property and making the sellers love you. So with that being said, how are you educating buyers? You mentioned that you do an interview consultation with people and they want to buy a house. How do you, first of all, get them to sit down with you? And second of all, what are you telling them to say, look, 11 o'clock at night, 8 o'clock in the morning, that's not really fair to anybody? Well, I do. I, I, you know, it is hard because it's an instant society that we live in. Everything's instant. You know, everybody wants now, 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 you know, you know text, text, text. Never, there's never a phone call conversation anymore. You have to really, and I'm, I'm a lot like you, I'm keeping it real. And, and I, even when I talk to buyers, I say, oh, that's great. That sounds wonderful. I'd love to take you out and show you that house. Now, let me ask you a few questions. You know, you have anything to sell, you know, and I just try to make, keep it light with them, try to be funny, try to, you know, get on their side, be their friend. And this is how I teach it to my agents is, you know, you've got to, don't be so stiff in the conversation. You know, they, they all try to be like, oh, well, okay, okay. Uh, uh, you know, they get all scared, you know, about asking questions. You have to ask the right questions and you have to say, and if they start acting, you know, being put off with you for asking those questions, I say, you know what? I understand that you feel like you're being a little put off, like I'm asking two personal questions, but let me ask you, if you had a $500,000 house for sale, would you like me to just take anybody in your house? I turn it around to them. And they said, well, no, I understand what you're saying. I said, well, I'm not trying to give you the third degree. I'm just trying to find out because these people really want to move in 30 days. So I'm just trying to find out if you're trying to buy in 30 days or not. Because they're trying to clean up their house and put everything up and do their laundry and everything to get ready for you tomorrow. So they want to make sure you're serious. And they all say, well, I am serious. I'm like, well, that's great. I'm serious, too. But let's make sure we have everything put together right and make sure you're ready because if you fall in love with this house, you want to put an offer on it right away. And if you're not ready, you'll be upset because the market is, there's no inventory and somebody's going to come in and swoop it out right from underneath you. And usually when you break it down like that, then they're a lot easier about getting things that they need to do together to make sure that they are ready. And then you, then you have a whole different conversation. Then they're not put off by you by asking the right questions. And that's usually how you handle it. Because the, if you don't handle it personal, then they get all mad and offended. All right. So knowing that in 22 years, tell us about a time when you had an unreasonable buyer or seller and how you managed it. I've been at a closing table and this is the the funniest story I tell. I had a a gentleman come down from New York and he was, and I was the selling agent and he had a buyer's agent. This was a young agent. and I I thought she was going to have a heart attack, but we were sitting at the closing table and the guy was just being a complete jerk and everything. And he was a big guy. He was about seven feet tall and big guy. And we're sitting there and he kept wanting more and more and more. And it was a bank property. So, you know, that's back when the, the sellers didn't come, they signed everything and sent their docs to the closing table so it's just the buyer, myself, and the buyer's agent there. And he kept saying, well, I want this. I want that. I want that. I'm like, well, you can't have that. We've already negotiated the deal. This is the deal. You either sign the papers, get the house, or not. And he kept going on and on. I said, you know what? I'm done with this. I'm over you. You know, and this house is about 800000 I said, you know what? I'm done. And I just reached over, grabbed the HUD, took all the papers off the table, walked out of the closing. <laughs> and I thought the agent was going to hit the floor. Because it's about a $20,000 commission for me and a $20,000 commission for her. And the attorney just happened to be one of my girlfriends. And I thought she was going to hit the floor, too. I said, we're not doing this. I'm, I'm over this. And he was like, huh? I said, you obviously don't want to buy this house. You don't need it. I don't need the money. I got plenty of money. So we're, we're not doing this. I'll let somebody else buy the house. Good for you. Sometimes and you do have to show the strength. The office. And they came running down the hall. And my attorney friend said, okay, well, the agent's on the floor. First of all, the man's just sitting there with his eyes wide open and everybody would like you to come back down here. I said, no, I'm done. I'm about, I'm about to leave. It's Friday afternoon. I'm going home. I said, I'm probably going to drink. I said, but, you know, I've already called the bank and they said, that was finally and do whatever you want to do. And I said, OK. And so the man's come down the hall to me. He said, well, uh, and I'm not going to get to buy the house. I said, no, I'm going to sell it to somebody else. I'm over you. You've been asked the whole entire time. I'm sick of it. I don't need to take abuse from anybody and I'm not taking it from you. And he said, oh, was there anything I do? I said, nope. And I started getting my purse, walking out the door. He chased me to the parking lot, started begging. Now, this is a seven-foot man. We closed the deal. And to this day, we are friends. And he calls me about every three or four months, wanting to know what the market's doing. And said, when I get ready to sell this house, Leanne, I'm going to let you list it. And I said, okay, whenever you get ready, let me know. And we're still friends to this day. 
Well, you showed the strength, though. I mean, you started thinking about how many of our moments that happen in real estate would be averted and honestly what the public's opinion of us would be if we did show some strength once in a while and stop letting our clients get pushed around as well as ourselves pushed around because you think about back to what you said originally you have agents that call at 11 o'clock at night wanting to show a property or call first thing in the morning they're already in the driveway and it's because they didn't tell their client no this is unreasonable behavior that the clients run roughshod over them and harm sellers and don't get houses. And a guy like this pushed and pushed and pushed until you pushed back. And now he says, I got somebody that will go to work for me because that strength does indicate that you're confident and that you can do your job. You know, the other day I had a guy that had been coming from California and the agent called me at the last minute. And that's a lot of times the agents don't plan. And when you sell higher end houses, you've got to have, you know, you've got to do some due diligence before you just put somebody in the car and take Absolutely. them out. Absolutely. The guy's been trying to see the house and I've been trying, you know, I don't, it's not an FBI investigation to see a house, but you got to have something. You know, I told the girl, I said, can you get me something? Do you have anything? And she's like, no, I don't have anything. I said, you know, you're taking somebody out. You don't have anything about, you don't know. I said, that's dangerous. Number one, you need to have something. Um, Does your broker not require you to do anything? And she's with a well-known company. And I said, y'all don't have any training or anything. I said, you know, here at our company, we do require that, you know, maybe you should think about that because you have nothing about this person. They're just coming in. You're putting them in your car. You don't know anything about. To me, that's a dangerous situation. And and at my company, we have a policy about that. That's number one. We have a policy. That's why you have a buyer interview or something about them. You know, how many times, Lee, have we read about stories about agents taking people out and it, it, it did not end well? Oh, yeah. So uh, that to me is, a, and I even say that on the phone when people get really nasty about it. I said, you know, sir, I understand that you're put out with me for asking these questions, but this is a security issue. Um, you know, I, what if I was your wife or your daughter? Would you want me to do that? And then that usually backs them down, too, when you say something like that. So they they turn their tune really quickly when you say something like that. And if they're, and if they're angry, then they just have to find another agent. It's not going to be me. But like I said, you know, and she wanted to see it. So finally, the man gets the information. They go out to the house and and um, they see the house. And this gentleman's talking to the neighbor. And he said, yeah, I've been trying to see this house for two weeks. But the agent is so mean. The listing agent is so mean. We couldn't get in. <laughs> my client my client comes home and the neighbor tells him, say, that man, that man wanted to make an offer on your house. But he couldn't see it because your, your agent's mean. Wouldn't let him in. And my client said, yeah, I pay her to be mean, you know, and not let people in my house. And we busted out laughing. So then about two or three, we were under contract with that same man and the, his agent wouldn't get the offer over and all this stuff. And and so so the agent finally sent the offer. I said, gosh, what took you so long to get the offer? I almost had an offer come in between. She said, oh, my client's mad. He said, you need to be better like the agent that has the house listed. So now he's mad at her and said he need, that she needs to be more like me. So it's funny how it always comes around full circle. So you you have to be, you know, you have to learn to be, sometimes you have to be good and aggressive in a good way, you know, not a bad way. Right. From a, from a strength perspective, not from a power perspective. Yeah. And, and people like that. And, you know, I think I get more listings from being, people know me as being a great negotiator and being a strong and, and not taking anything off of anybody. And when you're negotiating, people say, she's a tough negotiator. He said, yeah, that's why I hired her. You know, so that's a good thing sometimes when you have that reputation. All right. So, Leanne, if anybody is looking for a realtor in the greater Atlanta market, specifically Conyers, but I know that they generally they should just call you if they're thinking Atlanta and they would like to either come work for you, learn from you or buy or sell with you. How can they find you? Yeah, they can find us at Remax Around Atlanta. They can find us on the Web or they can find us at LeanneLong.com. That's L-E-A-N-N-E-L-O-N-G.com. Or my email address is L. L-O-N-G at Remax.net. Our phone number is 770-922-4222. And don't worry, people. I know y'all didn't write any of that down because it's okay because all of Leanne's information is in the show notes for this episode. So whenever you're listening to this, whether it's at midnight or in the middle of the day, when you get back to your computer, click to find her information and reach out anytime. Leanne, thank you so much for coming on the show and thank you for being a force of strength in your market in a good way. Well, thank you so much for having me. I enjoy watching you all the time, and you've always been a mentor to me. It's what we do for each other, right? Yes, we do. Thank you so much. All right, people, if you're listening to this and you're thinking, I got my own story to tell, and you're a realtor, broker, investor, inspector, lender, or you're a normal consumer of real estate, buyer or seller, 
Give me a shout at Lee Brown on Twitter or on any of the social networks to be featured in a future episode. And until then, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss an episode and we'll see you next time. If you are listening to this episode and you need to tell us something about your crazy life in or around real estate, then tweet me at Lee Brown or reach me on any of the social networks. That's if you're a broker, realtor, investor, inspector, lender, or just a regular normal human being who happens to have dealt in real estate. Subscribe for more episodes. And as always, we are thrilled that you joined us for some crazy shit in real estate. See you next time.